exactly. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Daily Footy and Other Sports with uh, yours truly, Taz, and of course, Sean. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to apologise a little bit because um, Sean basically decided after the uh, the massive uh, WrestleMania predictions that he just wanted to lie in, really. So you can blame him for the lack of videos. Um, Eight hours of entertainment at WrestleMania, it's a lot to take in. Well... Sean doesn't really prioritise sleep as much as normal people do, so uh, uh, that's probably why he was watching it. Um, but yes, well, that is where we're going to start. He's not got for very long to speak about it because you know we went into things at length um, before. Um, we're not here to regurgitate information. We're here to give our analysis, and that's it. Well, we don't want to analyse too much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you, Sean's going to basically discuss the um the title matches as well as one or two i think uh, non-title matches that he feels is important to bring up so floor's yours go for it so as um taz alluded to we can talk about 18 matches if we wanted to i think most of them are brilliant however two matches that stood out weren't even tag team ma- weren't even title matches in all honesty with a firefly Funhouse match and the boneyard match and it's interesting because everybody wants to focus on the Boneyard match initially because, you know, Undertaker's theme, Undertaker's character, that he likes to have this gothic, scary theme of being in the graveyard, whilst the Bray Wyatt Cena match was really interesting because a lot of people have always questioned what does the theme do to make you actually lose your mental... Your, um, um, it makes you go insane basically every character, every wrestler that's fought the Fiend has led them to ch- have a character alteration and this is what's interesting that we saw it play out so it's interesting because each moment in a Firefly Funhouse match alluded to his debut failure, alluded to his marriage his first marriage failing and that's why he, couldn't, he delayed it so long with um, Nikki and that just failed his body, bodybuilding career fa- failure, in which CM Punk alluded to before, amongst other things about his rap career taking off, never taking off, and his lack of heel turn. That's why the NWO stuff. And that's why I wanted to talk about that. What's your opinion, Taz, about WrestleMania not having a crowd and they wanted to go for a new approach of trying to have a more cinematic um, perspective in matches? I have none. Thank you. Uh, so basically, I, uh, thing I, is no, I've been very clear about it from the work. I didn't think it should have gone ahead to begin with. So, you know, I wasn't really that excited or that bothered about it this time around. Um, and to be brutally honest, you've got two part timers who are the men's world champs, and unsurprisingly, as we expected, both basically gift wrapping yeah. it within four minutes to somebody else. It's not a surprise. Right. I, I wouldn't say, I think the Goldberg match versus Braun was actually more interesting because Goldberg, it, you expect him to go fast flying and just try to go for the fast approach while Brock Lesnar can have the variety of uh, match approaches as well. But uh, what I say about either match is it could be a bit tainted in the sense that Goldberg and Brock do not want to continually appear and risk their lives in this whole pandemic that we're experiencing. So it felt like to an extent that Brock just, as he, we said before, he confronted Vince McMahon about why they're actually doing WrestleMania in first place. He just said, okay, I'm going to drop the belt to Drew. Because if if it did happen in Tampa, if it did actually, if this never happened, this pandemic, I don't think he would have actually lost to Drew, but he would have eventually lost to Drew to build Drew. Yes, he would. He's had his fun. He has. He's had his fun. Drew was always going to be the prodigal son. He's finally had his proper opportunity. It was WrestleMania. He won the Rumble. Um, he was always going to get it. it I mean, because regardless, he's still not big enough. It, uh, that's what you can also argue. He still, he still needs time to grow. It's just you can see Roman yeah, Reigns. You, Roman Reigns had to feed off the fans, Reigns. and the fans really wanted to see McIntyre win it. Um, that's true. Simply Perhaps that then, happened last year, and, and to be honest, that, that was last year was purely fan driven. This one is 
he a lot of people have been saying, yeah, but we know how good he is. Why doesn't he actually get any world title opportunities? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, Brock, Brock means stock. Brock is with Brock. The WWE stock is at a historic high, although obviously now the pandemic caused a problem. But what I'm trying to allude to that is there was no guarantee that Brock would have lost, although there was always a side saying he could have won or could have lost. Goldberg, so the yes, script he was, will tell you that he probably would have lost. Yeah. So it's only, it's, it's only a script at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> as far as he, whether it was in the script or not, he stormed out and as the the douche that I think he is, he, um, pro- I think he got the sack in this as he left the premises. In fact, he got told to get out of that. So who who got sacked? This this Lesnar. He basically had a tough tussle oh, with, with um. With um. He's good. Hmm? He's too good. He's too much of a big commodity. He's well. He basically. He's, he's a, no look look. He might have been worth it back in the day. It was a waste of space. Right now. Oh, he's, he can start to deliver money. He's absolutely nothing to the company because he's never there. He, but he's he, when he's seen, there. He's seen he Perazzo more than I've seen her. To be honest with you. But, you know, it's interesting you mentioned this. I, I may disagree with you. I'm going to disagree with you. But no, nevertheless, there is a there's, a there's a problem that, that there's too many part-timers. And I wanted to focus on that particular, those two matches in particular, because we're talking of even John Cena, the, the match we spoke about beforehand, three part-timers were finally squashed by the full-time roster wrestlers. And this could be a set a precedent for now the full time roster wrestlers having more of an opportunity for establishing themselves. And the Undertaker thing is it's, it's unique in itself because of his legacy, and he couldn't have lost. And that was a fantastic match as well, cinematic, and perhaps the new direction Undertaker would need to go through because he cannot wrestle really well. Hence, he told um, Kurt Angle quite recently, Kurt Angle uh, had uh, mentioned in an interview that Undertaker confronted him to him that he was upset about his match with Goldberg last year in Crown Jewel and he wanted to redeem himself and Kurt Angle suggested AJ. Yeah, but we had three part-timers in WrestleMania. We had two part-timers as world champions. Yeah. I mean, that's and I think rubbish. Now it could be a chance. But they got squashed. They got absolutely squashed. The Goldberg gave. Yeah, but uh, you've Goldberg got to stop looking up. at it as if it's real life. It's not. It's it's all planned. I mean, it's they basically got told to get squashed. Yeah, I think. Well, so I think the, to an extent. Well, it was a good thing because usually part timers do not do. They always are given the advantage. Brock is given the advantage. Goldberg. Everyone's going to always complain. Exactly. That Edge, had, Edge did not get squashed because he won. And he's a yeah. he's not even he's even less of a part timer than the others because he's not been seen in a WWE ring for what seven years or something. So that's uh, the, that's still yeah. to be seen. He's he has signed a part time contract, but that's a actually a good point. But he's he's another unique case to uh, like Undertaker because he, he had a personal rivalry with Randy Orton, and he had to redeem himself because if the question is if Edge, as we spoke in a prediction show, if Edge lost. His career was already it wouldn't have really his second chance wouldn't have would have finished already. He had to beat um, Randy Orton, but I would must say his acting was brilliant. Whether it was when he was crying just before he actually gave the concerto uh, to we Randy do, Orton, we do need to move on to the other matches. Uh, I've got to interrupt because because I, I know, record guys, much, I gave him I gave him a ten minute time limit, and he's basically doing been talking about like two matches for. I don't think there's much Nine to talk about. Becky Vanessa was disgraceful because at, mm-hmm. it was a good end. It was nice that Becky was able to do the reversal. Shayna should have won. That was disgraceful that Becky won. I'm not going to cry and, about that. I yeah. like Becky so. Um, Charlotte Flair was a brilliant match. Charlotte Flair versus yeah, was a bit that one. Yeah, it was a rare Ripley, and he was yeah. upset with I, it. Like, I think I think I just didn't see. I just, it didn't make any sense to me. That's all it was. Like, uh, obviously, it's just. I mean, let Rhea lose it to somebody in NXT who's up and coming, or who's just about there, or deserves to have the title. Um, Charlotte's not going to go to NXT. Let's be brutally honest. Yes, I, I think she was. She's not, I think she's she not really though. Like Finn properly went to NXT. 
you know, for, we don't know how long for, but he's probably there. Charlotte's not going to really go there the same way. She's going to drop the title the first opportunity. And that's, they need to that's build. not the way I think Rhea should basically be, you know, going to the main roster, which is exactly what she's going to do now. So, um, uh, then she may stay because now another wrestler, as, as we saw on Raw last night, has joined Street Profits. Uh, I'm not, uh, I should know her name, just tipped out of my head. She came with her husband. Yeah, exactly. Bianca Bella. She's and then the EST of NXT. Um, yeah. And then a final match title, a few more title matches, Bailey. I did not see it. None of us saw that coming. Did you predict Bailey? I don't think any of us did. Um, nothing. I, I went with basically Armand and you went with Baszler and I went with Becky. And we all seem um, to have I gone away Bailey. from Bailey. But he said, if anyone's going to win, um, okay. if anyone's going to be able to keep their title it's most likely to be Bailey, and they'll drop the title from Becky whereas I went the other way so oh. so you know technically yeah. we didn't predict her to keep her title but yeah. something going on there with um, Sasha Sasha's you know, backstab literally um, is, yeah. is not far away but, you know um, what's interesting the commentary, the commentary I'm actually quite disappointed with some of the commentary because in that match, before the Sasha Bank and um, Bailey situation happened, when Sasha Bank got knocked out, the commentator alluded to the possibility that it could happen. And whenever that happens, it takes away that possibility. Just like Byron Saxon, so JBL announced that possibility that they could break up and then that then didn't happen, then Bailey was able to retain. It's, it's, not, like a, it's, not, it's not that. I mean, it's, not, it's basically like a, we've seen it before, that's all they're doing, they're stating it again. Yeah. No, but we all expect a Sasha back to get the advantage but, of Yeah, but she's, it wouldn't surprise me if she still did, even if they've said yeah. that. They're just going on what they've seen before. No, but um, it's too obvious. That's what they do. They, they want you to address it because you want to be surprised. WrestleMania is about being surprised. Just like uh, Drew McIntyre, he was getting super honest, around. I don't really want to be surprised at WrestleMania. I just want to see good matches, if anything. Simple as that. Uh, it's it's the pinnacle. No, I mean, what? it's the pinnacle. The show should be in the ring, not outside it with people being absurd. Um, Okay. No, you have to be surprised if, if you know if you know what's going to happen. The thing about wrestling, as you said, we need to move on, man. We need to move on. Oh. I, I gave I gave you a limit, and uh, we've surpassed it already. Um, Morrison, well done, Morrison, winning the triple threat tie, um, ladder match, and Street yes, yes, Profit have to retain. Um, okay, Undertaker, well done. All right, well done. Um, okay, we need to um, put in. Um, a quick word, actually, for um, um, Pep Guardiola's family. Unfortunately, um, he has sadly lost his mother to the uh, the illness we don't really want to talk about um, in the last couple of days. Um, you know, the Spanish numbers in particular have been well second only to Italy. Um, they have decreased I think for the fourth day in a row in terms of the totals um, so hopefully they're coming to you know, the side head in the right direction again so but um, obviously that's no consolation and our condolences go to um, Pep and his family at this horrible, yeah. horrible time. He donated a million pounds towards the fight of this evil pandemic and so it's it's really sad and unfortunately it doesn't I think he would have done it anyway but I mean it's not the way he would have wanted yeah, to no, I know. as a sort of gesture but um, yeah Sean's your camera's a bit funny do you want to oh, my apologies a yes. bit more yeah there we go um, yeah I, I do keep telling him guys to uh, just get something that doesn't move but uh, you know I'm even nice enough to say, Sean, you can move, but the camera can't, but it still keeps moving. Um, yes, so, I mean, another thing we were going to actually report on a couple of days ago, um, so it's not quite as fresh anymore, but it's still quite a big, big thing. And it's um, the fact that um, should the Premier League be voided and cancelled, Premier League would effectively be losing around 672 million um, 
you know, in, in revenue and things like that and sponsorship, et cetera, if that's the case. Absolutely astronomical figures, isn't it? I mean... Just for 11 games as well. It's just something about... Well, I think the Premiership's got less, like, eight, well, nine games. It depend, depends where you are. I mean, most of them yeah. have got around 10 games, 10 or nine. So yeah. you might have one more in hand. But, yeah, it, it depends where you are. But, I mean... It might not be quite as big a body blow to certain teams, although one of them is going to get some heavy criticism from us very shortly. Um, mm. But um, mid and lower league, lower teams in the Premier League alone, you know, are obviously going to struggle um, losing that kind of revenue. Um, and it does appropriately lead us on to what we're going to talk about next, which is this furlough that's been introduced. Yeah. Um, the leader that actually spoke the same thing. Tabas on Tuesday, so this is recorded on Tuesday, spoke about the same thing as you just mentioned that the Spanish league will lose the, about the equivalent 1 billion euros. And as you said, it's, it's amazing how many, just near the end of the season, how much money is involved. And probably argues the point that the season cannot be voided. True. Yeah, that is a, few, that is a possibility. I just think people are going to, there might be a case or a point. Because they're sort of saying, you know, they want the season done by the 30th of June. I think the suggestion is they realistically want the new season to start either on time or as close to being on time as they can. Um, it's interesting. Even Tepas said um, they're looking, if this, according to the Spanish government, because they have to work with them, they might even start the season by the end of June. So, or as you said, um, this, we're just saying, uh, reviewing what's been provided to us in an unknown timeline that we actually have just given our opinions and it's just extraordinary but at the same time we would have to most likely will have it in a closed arena going to lose a lot of the gate receipts of fans attending the arena that's 200 300 million just there yeah i mean then you know if they are going to finish it don't even let the fans anywhere near Exactly. Problem is, as we saw right before the ban of football, well, the postponement rather kicked in, um, people were still congregating outside the stadiums, both in Valencia and um, in Paris. Mm. It's just sheer madness, really. It is yeah. even, you know, uh, those guidelines are in place for you to not be in the stadium, not really be congregating in the nearest pubs or something to the stadium. Exactly. It's basically saying stay home, stay away. Um, and they still ignored it. And if anything, they put themselves more at risk as a result. So um, they have to restart. And I think they have to restart with, sadly, um, empty stands, unfortunately. Um, Better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know, I, know um, I read something in about the cricket that, um, big shout out to Joss Butler, by the way. Um, the birthday buddies. <laughs> so, um, I've got a very big soft spot for him. And for those of you that watched the World Cup final, he had the the uh, that final moment in the game when he uh stumped their players to win us the World Cup. So, love to him purely because um, he put his winning shirt signed by the players for auction to try donating as much as he can. I think thus far it's raised over 65,000. I don't know when the auction concludes. Maybe it's concludes today, but it's it's been doing super stuff. So big shout out to him as well. But no, I mean, in reference to the cricket, um, they're trying to, there was one suggestion, maybe to have two games going on at the same time. Like if it was going to be a test match and a, a one day match or something internationally, you could basically have both going on the same time because generally speaking your test sides aren't always aren't necessarily in your one day sides um because yeah. the way today's game is played and the one day and t20 setup it is the one day game is played like a t20 game it's so aggressive you still get this sort of mature players in there but it's very aggressive you know gone are the days when you think why well, if they get around 300 that's a really good score now it's it's par or under par um so um, yeah. um 
But I mean, they're, not... they're just trying to think of a way of doing that. And even if it's with no stand and nobody in the stand, they're just trying to say, well, we could basically have two games going on concurrently in different stadiums in the UK, for example, and we can bring a smart back to people's places. Um, and if people... And I think that'd be definitely a future topic to look into the impact in the cricket world. Look at the IPL. That's that's the equivalent of the Premiership. Yeah. Right. From an English perspective, I guess it's um, fortunate that we don't have to think about it in the same way at the moment because obviously our season doesn't start until this summer. Um, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, like you said, around the world, you know, IPL was probably due to either started already or around about now, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's not happening anymore. But um, we mentioned the furlough, and I think the only team we can really discuss in depth is the one team in that list just made absolutely no sense. They retracted what they said. Um, a couple of, well, to you guys, I guess, this would be today or yesterday. Um, yeah. But that's Liverpool. I mean, what were they thinking? Exactly. Do they, do they, sorry, did they have, are they not on six European titles and 18 league titles and still has, even without all their lack of success in the last 30 years, not one of the biggest sides in the world? Have I missed something? I haven't even agreed to take some money away from the players. And it was also extraordinary. The 20,000 Atletico Madrid fans, or not 2,000, sorry, 2,000 Atletico Madrid fans that refused to attend Anfield because of the pandemic, they, Liverpool refused to refund them. But then Atletico Madrid themselves actually had to cough up an extraordinary amount of money in order to refund the fans. And it's just, it's quite a bad They're image. very much a team united, aren't they, though? Um, they've always given off that sort of we're together. Um, and that's actually kind of a mentality that Simeone drills into his players as well, isn't it? Oh, no, that's, not, that's not better, Manu. That's, hmm? uh, I knew, I, that's I've, got, I've got my material strengthened for you. It, Man United have not said they're going to go for the fair law or not. But I, I think don't, I, honestly don't, I honestly don't think it will happen. It just won't. Because, because logically speaking, you know, they've got no excuses. Um, I think there's trying to be a Premier League all round discussion about player cuts. So it's it's clearly. That's the kind of stage you want to do. You don't want to just go, right, so we're cutting your salary. It has to be a kind of, guys, can we can we rely on you to accept this cut? And then there was a further discussion, I think that was released today, about how they're actually trying to think about it in a more sensible manner and say, well, yeah. we can't just do the same uni unified cut on all the teams because they're all in different positions, both in the league and financially. You know, like United, if you gave them a 30, 40% cut or something like that, um, it won't affect most of the players in the same way that it would say Norwich. That would yeah. be quite a big impact. But of course, you know, the rate that these guys are being paid, they're being paid thousands a week, even the lower ranked, the lower, the yeah. lower sides. Um, and if you're in, and you're, if you're in a position where you can't leave your house and then you have to do necessary grocery shopping, it's not too bad for them, isn't it? I mean, most of them are paying what. Well, at a push if they're still paying rent for these places but although most of them can afford to buy them a exactly. couple of grand a month maybe if they're renting it out um and you're not going to overdo it on shopping yeah. because there are limitations on what you can buy um and man united are a club that spends on a highest they've got the one of the highest wage bill so like i mean this statistically phil jones gets more money than money and that's quite funny to think about it's it i mean it's it's not funny as such, but it's um, it's funny in a twisted way. But I mean, I think uh, we've always known there's been a real odd wage structure at United, and it's only recently that, with the players are being bought, they're being bought for the right reasons, they're being bought for the right, being the right fit, and they're being given a salary that you sort of would expect. Like, you know, Harry Maguire, an 80 million signing, you would sort of be expecting them to demand what. 400 or something stupid like that. I don't know what he's on actually, but it probably is between one and 200 or something at a push, which in the grand scheme of things for a player of that price could be worse. Um, Bruno, I believe, 
I think it was initially quoted as being 100 to 150, but that might actually be less. It might even be like 80, I think. And he's already a signing that most people think, well, he was, he's, worth, he's worth the overall price that you're basically going to have to pay. Never mind yeah, the 47 you have to pay for it. So, it may have not worked out, but it has worked out. It was a risk. Yeah, it was. I mean, the add-ons part made it clever a signing because it was in the current climate, 47 odd is not horrific for the bigger side. Um, yeah. But like, to defend your if you were someone who was slagging off Fred, for example, I wasn't one of them. Um, but if you were someone who was making fun of him, then, you know, you would have, you would have um, laughed at the fact that he would cost 50 million and it took him a season to get into his stride. But and also to defend your point about the, the whole um, clubs not being supportive, we've spoken about it before. The Bundesliga, they actually were um, the top four clubs, Mönchengladbach, um, Lever- Dortmund, Bayern Munich, they've all have combined together to support the rest of the Bundesliga. Barcelona, we've spoken about this on our previous podcast, they actually have now gone through with it quite recently, the 70% pay cut of the players themselves, so the um, non-playing staff can have um, the 100% pay, which is really good for them. And even Serie A, look at Juve, they have deterred their whole pay, frozen their pay. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fantastic. And it's quite sad. And the team, the club, the league that gets paid the most aren't doing that. Quite funny. And yeah. I'd love the premiership. But it would almost be an interesting statement if someone like Norwich did say, well, so guys, would you be okay if we cancelled your salary for the next four months? What would they say, I wonder? Like someone like Puki has been at Norwich couple of years maybe he's earned enough to sort of bought a house outright straight off the bat I don't know um you know you could be uh, arguably if he was on 20k a week or something like that when he started and I don't know he would have got an increase when you go and you get yeah, that I'm, I'm just saying I'm just saying if he was on 20k a week or something when he started that and then he got a you know a pay rise but he was on 20k a week initially and you know he's he's done a season there, yeah. He can basically own a house, especially as the fact that he's living in Norwich. So it won't be quite. I don't think it'll be quite as much. Uh, yeah, exactly, in London. So, exactly. But that's the thing. Like, I mean, and then if he's got a pay rise, then it's it's even it's even more likely. So you ask yourself, apart from the newbies like that are just coming through the ranks, like um, Rilla. Hmm? Villa is actually interesting. How much money they've invested? So mean, much money. I just mean in terms of players, like Max Arams, he's the one I can start starting to think of. Todd Campbell, oh, this is his yeah. first. This is his first season. He's not going to be earning that much. He's only seventeen um, or eighteen or something. They um, got some two loan loan signings though, like Duda. He's probably uh, not too much because Bundesliga does not really spend a lot of money on their players compared to the Premiership. So, yeah, you have a point. I think Villa is actually a club to be more worried about. They've invested too much money in the risk. I mean, that's of- just, it's just an example because obviously, currently as things stands, that, that there's going to be a reduction rather than a, you know, an outright uh, mm. removal of their salary for a certain period of time. Um, yeah. But it just gives you a rough idea that, you know, an okay, but well, like 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 a sort of all right, just making his way in the team. Premier League player these days is probably on you know at the very least 10 20k. Ty Chong yeah. is just a kid, probably more, he's no, just got a 30k more. contract, and Angel Gomez that's, might be getting exactly the same. That's championship like, money, hmm? that's probably, probably more championship money now, nowadays. 30k, yeah, that, that, that's that's exactly why. Premier League and Championship are, I'm not saying it's like a cakewalk for them, but it's it's, it's easier for them to handle it if, if they're getting these reductions. But, you know... Um, what does think, everybody else think? I think that's another question we have to ask for everyone else to message the comments because I'm not sure how much more time we've got because um, we've got a timer today, right? Yeah, well, I, yeah. I've, I've, Sean and I have been wary that, you know, we can go on and on. We've got just over a minute left. Um, before we hit the, the half an hour mark, so um, what we've got one more topic to quickly talk about. So I think we can we can maybe bring this up if something develops with it. 
it's none of those things. Um, it's it's actually um, both a celebration of and a bit of a tribute of um, an absolute legend of sport. You know, not just in his sport, but sport in general. Um, it takes a special kind of player or athlete to be so well known or so popular and and all of that. <laughs> We're running out of time. <laughs> no, no, I mean we we can drag on a tiny bit. I mean it's just like you know, oh, I couldn't I couldn't let you just talk about wrestling for half an hour and then we go okay, what do we do now? Um, yeah, it, and it's um it's Kobe Bryant. You know, obviously a lot of you I'm sure were aware that he uh, tragically passed away along with his um, 13 year old daughter and Gianna and I believe seven other people. Was it nine? I think it was seven. I think it's a total of nine of them. Um, you got six, was it like six? I think I think there was no seven. What. I think there were seven. Um mm. but um yeah sadly um you know it was a helicopter crash that um caused him to sadly no longer be with us and um fittingly, deservingly, um the NBA have decided to um you know induct him into their Hall of Fame. Um, for this year I don't think it was a difficult decision when I'm thinking of greatest players certainly in my lifetime in my era he's one of the very very few players in my conversation of like my top five or ten players in my lifetime him and Jordan Hmm? him and Magic Magic Jordan Um, well I think that would have been an exciting combo wouldn't it Um, well no I mean um yeah, but I mean, in my lifetime, I mean, I had the pleasure of seeing the back end of Jordan's career, who I think most people, if not everyone, believes is the greatest there's ever been. Um, Space Jam. Space Jam. <laughs> Space Jam. That's, where, that's probably where a lot of people were introduced to him for the first time, as well as maybe uh, Charles Barkley, <laughs> not sounding the brightest spark in the world in that film. Um, but he... he yeah, I mean, he, he's just one of the best players of all time. Incredible points tally. Um, he's right up there. I believe, I believe it was literally a day or so after uh, LeBron surpassed his total that the, that mm. the incident happened. So, yeah, one day they well, were sort of celebrating together, you know, his achievement, and then um, sadly we lose well, it, yeah. unfortunately. So. Um, I just want we just wanted to quickly say, you know, it's just um absolute pleasure to watch a player like that. And as a fan of Man U, for example, and he's a Milan fan. Hmm? He's a Milan fan. No, 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 I mean me. As as a Man U right. fan, as someone who absolutely loves a one man team. A, a, a one a player who's a one man player, a one team player, <laughs> can't even say it. A one team player in and Ryan Giggs, for example, one of a couple of players, in fact. Um, I think it was incredible that he stayed there as long. It makes those kind of achievements that he's had even more impressive because if you find an era that you're successful, um, and I think he actually, to be fair, he was successful over that spell yeah. in general. But, you know, if you're able to sustain your career and ex- extend your career as long as possible at the same team, have all that success. It's incredible. So you, and you don't like LeBron James then? He he keeps on coming back home and then going back to LA. You must hate LeBron James. Um I don't hate LeBron. I mean he's a he's a really, really he's actually a really good guy as well. Um he is he I, mean, is. I, mean, I, mean, I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't actually like the move to Miami Heat if I'm honest. Um but it was where he had a success. And to be really honest, they were 3-1 down in the finals uh, when he went back to Cav- the Cavaliers mm. against the Golden State Warriors. And yeah, they played well to get back into it. But to be really honest, you know, Golden State Warriors are probably the best team of the last 10 years. Um, having won three, in, three titles in four years and that fourth one that they should have won was against the Cavs when they were 3-1 up and blew that lead. Um, I still, I still believe they blew it rather than the Cavs winning it. But must the have been nice to go home and uh, win it with his 
hometown team. Mr. Cleveland. Hmm? But he's Mr. Cleveland. He should have stayed with Mr. Cleveland. That's Mr. Cleveland. As a yeah, but you know, really. the, the, prob- the problem sometimes is if you're not able to build a team around people, um, left with almost no choice. You know, it would have been a crime to the sport if he hadn't won a, a title. You know, he may have won that title when he went back to Cleveland, but he, what if he didn't? What if he stayed at Cleveland the whole time and none of that Miami Heat success came around and and he uh, continued to win nothing at Cleveland? He'd be one of the best he's players lucky. to have not won anything. But he's so lucky John will never find him. John Moxley will never find him because he lives in LA now, just like LeBron James, and he's from Cleveland as well. He's just lucky John Mox, Moxley never got yeah. him. But um, we just wanted to sort of end on that note, celebrating one of the the very best, certainly in our lifetime. Uh, no, Sean. Nope. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's non-sports um, information. It's actually about quite a serious... Uh, we haven't been able to address it over the last past few days. When uh, We always talk about politics. doesn't matter what political party, political agenda you have. A man's a man. And it's been... It was really sad to hear yesterday that Boris Johnson was moved into ITU unit. But now some people are thinking that it may not be true, but the government has just said that he doesn't need a ventilator, which is good news. I want to wish him a speedy recovery. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, re- we want everyone to sort of find some way of just coming out of this. You know, we want... It's, it. You can just sort of see, like, the crumb of comfort that people are holding on to abroad right now. Like, you know, when you're seeing a reduced total on a day-by-day basis and even Wuhan is considering opening their doors yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't do that personally I mean I just think um you've got to let it all properly ride out and make sure everyone's absolutely fine don't take any chances because unfortunately it's not the, numbers up. the numbers went back up so we had three days of the numbers falling continuously consecutively and now it just went to its highest well, I think it's due to the incubation period, but we're not here to talk about yeah. um, particular science. But we just did, we were sort of forced into doing that a lot at the start of our channel, and mm-hmm. um, that's purely because every single sport that we wanted to discuss was affected by it. So, exactly. um, But we wanted to end uh, the episode on a kind of respectful note um, to an absolute legend of both basketball and, and sport. And um, yeah. Uh, rest in peace, Kobe, and uh, completely Please. deserve to be a Hall of Famer. I'm just really, truly sorry that you weren't here to um, to uh, accept it in person. But he'll be he'll be accepting it from above, I'm sure. Um, so, um, hopefully, he's watching right now as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, but no, all we can say really is um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, um, hope we didn't drag on too much again today, but um, I think we're just about manageable time. But um, <laughs> but yeah, we will see you in the next episode. We will. We promise we won't be going through a, a weird old hiatus that we just did. Um, it was just Otis. Otis is a legend. He got Mandy. All right, we all love Otis, but we'll get back to that. You wasted your own time, so don't bring up other people. All right, bye guys. See you later. <laughs>